Joining us now to break down the day's top headlines is Cassie Smedley, the Deputy Communications Director for the Republican National Committee. Cassie, when we look at the president's return back to the White House, I mean, today the conversation is about his health, getting him back on track in order to lead this country once again. But in the big picture, there's another message that the White House is trying to convey, and it's the idea that perhaps they want to get past this pandemic and not let it affect everybody's life. Is that correct? Well, certainly, or the president, as he sent his message last night, is to show that there is a way to be healthy and go with the advice of your doctors and consultation with your doctors and the professionals, but to get through this. And when we talk about very um, grippingly talk about the 200,000 who have lost their lives, we also should talk about the nearly 7 million who have survived this in our country alone. Mm -hmm. And the president, by showing this uh, message of optimism, this uh, image of leadership, is saying, I want to be part of the 7 million, and I want to stand with those of you who have fought this battle, those of you who are working hard, not just for the battle for your health, but for your livelihoods. And I stand with you to help us all get through this. That's the sign of an optimistic leader that we should all be wanting in our country and frankly around the world. And to some degree too, I think it's worth noting that people will get this virus. There's no way to stop it. I think the fact that President Trump, one of the most protected men in the entire world, got it is a testament to that very idea. So there are other conversations that come into this as well when we talk about lockdowns, uh, the, what it's doing to people mental health wise, depression, the opioid return, uh, even domestic abuse in instances are on the rise. So there's a lot that goes into it as well. But when it comes to the economy right now, we do have some news on that today, hearing that President Trump is halting coronavirus relief negotiations that was taking place between Treasury Secretary Mnuchin and House Speaker Pelosi. What is the message that they're trying to convey there? Yeah, I mean, we know that Speaker Pelosi has not been negotiating in good faith this entire time. In fact, since the phase three bill was passed earlier this summer, the president has been the only one to take action. He has done four executive orders to try and protect the American people from the financial consequences of this lockdown. And Nancy Pelosi has refused to get her act together. And so I think what the president is saying is, listen, I refuse to let this be a political football any longer, the livelihoods and the health of the American people to be a political football. I'll do what I can from here. But from a political standpoint, we need to get out there and make sure that every candidate on the ballot is putting out the message of if you want people working for you, not just delaying like the Democrats have done, not just drumming up some controversy, whether it be impeachment or taxes or you name it, but actually working for you, then you need to elect those people into office because you don't have them right now with Nancy Pelosi and they have the lever, the Democrats control the House of Representatives, which has the lever to release the funds that the American people so desperately need. And she's unwilling to do it because this is about politics for her. So I think the president's going to continue to do what he can. But um, he's showing the song mess a strong message that she no longer will get to hold this political card. And when it comes to that as well, I think House Speaker Nancy Pelosi knows exactly what she's doing. She doesn't want to stimulate the economy just one month out from the election and give President Trump this idea that there was a bipartisan consensus that he followed through on mm -hmm. that helps out millions of American people, for that matter, during a time of need. So I think you're exactly right to say that there are political ramifications to this as well. But when we talk about what is happening over the next 30 days, I mean, it's crunch time now for these two campaigns. Mm -hmm. And earlier today, we saw Dean Iraq declassify another memo, once again saying that the 2016 uh, investigation into President Trump may have been nothing more than a political stunt by Hillary Clinton, saying that she was trying to tie President Trump to the Kremlin in order to distract from her own email server. And we're now hearing, too, that U.S. Attorney John Durham probably won't have any more developments until after the election. Is this still an issue that should be brought up to the American people? Well, I think it's notable that just as President Trump and so many others have been saying all along, this went right to the very top. These, what was declassified today shows that, that then President Obama was, was made aware of this as well. And that the Democrats are so hellbent on not relinquishing any control that they are willing to do whatever it takes to try and protect their bubble of power. Mm. And all voters need to be plainly aware of that. And what they tried to do in 16, there but for the will of the voters, that was the only thing that stopped them, was yeah. that the voters going out and exercising our right to vote and, and exercising our will to have something different, to not have a career politician in the White House. And so that should be a rallying cry to our voters this time around as well, or to anyone who's on the fence about who they're going to vote for. Don't underestimate the lengths that the Democrats will go to to 
keep hold of their bubble of power. And if um, you believe that President Trump has been fighting for you, if you believe that he is the person who's going to protect your precious dollars in your pockets, then you need to get out and you need to vote. Do not take your vote for granted and do not take for granted that the Democrats are playing on a level playing field because they will do whatever it takes to protect their bubble of power. And really what happened in 2016, too, has been continued throughout the entirety of the Trump administration. We could talk about mm -hmm. the Mueller investigation. We could even talk about the Ukraine allegations that led to impeachment as well, because it is still all tied together in some way. I mean, uh, yeah. there was this narrative that anything that is beneficial to Ukraine or might hurt Ukraine is because the president was in the pocket of the Kremlin. That was the allegation that we've heard now for the better part of four years. So I think you're exactly right to say that this does speak to something bigger than just what happened in 2016. And I think the American people do want to hear more about it. But Cassie Smedley, I appreciate you coming on the program tonight, breaking down the day's top headlines. Thank you. Thank you.